Hey guys, Kavina the coach here. I guess the park is my new normal while I'm in Mexico anyways. And that little guy helped me make a very, the point of this video. So, hi everybody, my name is Kamina the coach. This channel was originally created to help people get it together to work and live abroad. With the influx of um, COVID in 2020, I was forced back into the United States. So I refocused the channel a little bit, or completely, to help people work through um, early childhood trauma and adoption trauma as I also worked through my early, uh, early childhood trauma, adoption trauma, and my reunion story. August of 2022, I came back overseas. It is now January of 2022. Very humble, thankful, and grateful to not have to be living in the United States right now. For those of you who know me and have been following me, related to that so it, a little bit about living abroad but this could be the case if you were living in the United States generating topsoil and just really start um, taking control of what I put in my body. So um, growing my own food, I'm pretty sure I cannot slaughter a chicken, but it's possible that I might be able to produce my own fish and have a shrimp farm as well. Um, uh, my body has rejected being vegetarian, so I don't think that I'll be able to be full vegetarian, but um, I do kind of want to live that lifestyle where offering them some fruit and veg for their um, locally um, slaughtered um, free-range chickens or whatever other meat that they are taking care of there on their own farms. Um, so <laughs> in all of that, so here's the thing. I, I can't speak for a European life, but I know for sure in the United States, especially in my community, um, we are very sanitary we have, have sanitized the earth out of our lives I know someone who says that she can't even walk on the grass barefoot um, it's a huge problem the way that we have disconnected from the earth and um, as you start looking at living a more holistic more natural life kind of getting back to the earth I think one thing that we don't think of really is bugs. So I am here in Mexico and I am in currently in Chiapas, Mexico. I love it here. What you see around me is kind of indicative of what it looks like here. Remember I did say it was January 2023 and it's probably 91 degrees out today. It's absolutely gorgeous. However, when you have warm weather year round, that means you have perfect, um, a perfect situation for bugs year round. And um, the other night, I was just tormented by the fact that I had bugs in my bed. Um, there were bed bugs. They're not cockroaches. They're not even, to my knowledge, ants. Maybe some type of ant, but not, not an aggressive ant. Um, and the, it's so normal, it's so common here that the people who run the hotel where I'm staying are like, well, they don't bite. <laughs> they're so normal here that um, they're just like on the tables in the restaurant, like it's just no big deal. And as I'm having coffee and the woman sets out the sugar, they just like bombard the sugar and it is freaking me out. This is the same Kamina, the coach, who's saying that she wants to have bees. Um, and it's very interesting. Um, if you've been following my channel, I recently discovered I have tryptophobia, tryptophobia, um, fear of holes. Um, but yes, 
setting um, these doesn't really ignite it or maybe that might be what ignited it while I'm watching the videos I don't really feel anything but I did have a I did have a sorry kind of gotta watch what's going on around here um, but I did have um, a really bad episode um, about a week ago that I had to share that was why I discovered havening and the havening technique to kind of um, diffuse that really triggered nerve like of keep to continually replaying some some pictures of holes anyways so this is the same Kamina who's saying that she wants a food farm who's saying that um, she wants to have bees and be a beekeeper who's like, oh my God, there's bugs in my bed, but who, who wants to sleep with bugs? I think that it's just not a thing for developing countries, people who live closer to the earth, and um, something that I know myself that I'm just gonna have to work around. Um, looking at more natural kind of insect repellents because In permaculture, um, what they do is they will plant um, certain plants to um, kind of deter bugs. So they plant like stinky plants and stuff that will keep bugs off of the strawberries and the fruits and all that kind of stuff. So, oh, I had the weirdest dream about like worms last night and I had to like wake myself up which is strange because, you know, I don't have a problem baiting a hook. Um, I don't have a problem, I mean, depending on how small the bug is, like kind of shooing it or away with my hand. Um, I try not to kill a bug if it's way, way too much in my, in my space, possibly. I try not to kill bugs in my space. I'm sorry that you have to die. I haven't, I haven't involved quite that much. But, um, I did, I did watch a, another um, gentleman who has been a teacher and an expat in my group. I looked at his channel and he had an experience um, staying in the jungles of Costa Rica and he was talking about the bug experience there. And I know that when I was living in um, the Itzmo in Oaxaca, that was a real thing there as well. Like the outside was really, really on the inside, even though, so they were in a tent in Costa Rica, but in Oaxaca, I was um, living inside of a dwelling, not really what you'd call a house, but living inside of a dwelling, and still the outside was really inside. It's interesting because when I lived in China, I lived in um, more like a village, and we didn't really have a bug problem, but that's because also they have a really, really cold winter. So when you live someplace that I, doesn't really have much of a winter, you're going to see bugs more often and when you're going to live more naturally. So I do know people who are very, very westernized who do live in Mexico. There's a huge community of African Americans living in Playa del Carmen here in Mexico. Um, and they're living much more western style, but that's not my goal at all. Um, I'm not trying to live in a tent for sure, but I'm also not trying to live a very Western lifestyle either. So I just kind of recognize that there is going to be more of the outside inside. Um, I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to get to a place where I'm going to be able to do without air conditioning because where I will settle is going to be hot because I'll settle either here in, Chi in Chiapas or, or Oaxaca. It's really, really hot in the summer, really, really hot in the summer. So. I don't know if I can acclimate that much. Um, we'll see. I, I know that um, it's not healthy for me and it's not healthy for the environment. But yeah, so that was what this video is about. There's no real advice. It's more like just a warning. Um, <laughs> if you are, an, um, so if you're just kind of backpacking through, you probably have the mindset where it doesn't matter very much anyways. 
If you're an international teacher, you probably won't have to experience these kind of things because international schools are gonna take care of you a lot better. Um, when I get to Iraq, this probably won't be a thing because um, um, in very hot climates, I, um, the buildings are sealed quite a bit better. So it probably won't be a thing in Iraq. It was not a thing for me in Saudi Arabia either. That was a very Western style building. But I just, um, yeah, so for those of you though, who are um, just ESL teachers, so not a licensed teacher, just kind of traveling, um, teaching to travel, or um, those of you who work remotely may experience these kinds of things as well, especially traveling to um, third world or developing countries where you have more of the outside inside. So really learning how to get back to earth being more comfortable being connected with where you came from. Um, I will never be one of those people who walks around barefoot all the time, but I did, I was barefoot all the time when I was young. I'm not going for that. I do believe in earthing. I do know that connecting to the earth helps deionize your body and it helps ground you, literally ground you. So taking out a lot of the negative the negative electrical charge stored in your body so it is good to be able to put your foot feet into the earth i will likely never be one of those people walking around barefoot i have um, one of my uh, mentors that i watch permaculture actually is like out in her um, food forest in a skirt with no shoes no gloves or anything i don't know that i'll ever be that tough either but <laughs> But I am definitely making it a goal to, to reconnect to Mother Earth and getting more comfortable with the outside being inside, getting more comfortable with bugs and nature and all that good stuff. Who knows, maybe it will come to um, come a day where, I don't know, I, don't, I really don't think I'll ever be able to kill one of my chickens. I will have chickens for eggs, but I, I don't think I'd ever be able to kill one of my chickens. We'll see. Um, I do. I do think as I evolve more, I, I feel like um, if I'm going to eat meat, I don't feel like there's anything wrong with eating meat. I feel like there's a lot wrong with um, the current system, the the industrialized system of how they're they're keeping animals in very tight, confined areas and injecting them with hormones and mass injections of antibiotic and um, so free range ethically kept meat I think it's good but I also think it's good to be able to kill what you eat um, I don't know does this happen to everyone as I get older it seems like I don't know as I get older I get more natural coming back more to earth um, and this is and this has just been a part of my evolution from working and living abroad. So yeah, so that was just um, what this video was about. The expect more outside coming inside. If you are working and living abroad in second and third world countries, um, as always. And until next time, my name is Kamina the Coach. Sending you love, light, peace, and joy. I am out.